is section 3.3, so it's what your homework was on. Okay. You guys had to do through 45, and when people got to 35, that's when it got tough, because it's like we haven't really seen many inequalities yet. So I wanted to do an example. Okay. So 39 says, solve the inequality and state your answer using interval notation, and they give me the following. They say x to the fourth is less than or equal to 16 plus 4x minus x cubed. You guys have to understand, you could actually guess some answers, right? Like, let's suppose I plugged in x equals 0. Would that be a solution to this or not a solution to this? No. Well, if I put in 0, what's 0 to the fourth power? Zero. Okay, 0. Oh, yeah. Is less than or equal to what? 16. 16. Is that true or false? That's true. Okay, so 0 is a solution. But we're not going to do guess and check. Because when you have an inequality, there are infinitely many solutions. But I want you to understand, you can. Okay, you can come up with solutions this way. Now, what we want to do is find all the solutions. And so my first recommendation is, I'm going to set the inequality. I'm going to change it so that one side is 0. It just makes things easier to work with. And so the very first thing I'm going to write down is I have x to the fourth. I'm going to write plus x cubed minus 4x minus 16 is less than or equal to 0. If you look at what I did, right, I added x cubed to both sides, and I subtracted the other stuff from both sides. And would you agree that solving the first inequality is exactly the same as solving the second inequality? How many are with me on that point? Do you see what I did? I just moved all the terms over using algebra, right? And so basically, here's the, here's the deal. We are asked to find values of x, those are inputs, such that f of x, which is this function, x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 4x minus 16, is less than or equal to 0, right? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make, see, this is a function, a polynomial function, right? That's what we've been dealing with in this whole chapter. We're trying to find places where it is less than or equal to 0. One of those places is 0. But we want to find all of the x values that make, it less than, make that function less than or equal to 0. Notice f of 0 is negative 16, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by finding where f of x equals 0. Let's just figure out, first of all, where it equals 0. And then we'll worry about when it's less than or equal to. And this is a basic thing you do with inequalities. First, pretend it's an equation. Then worry about less than. And actually, isn't that what we did for the entire rest of this section? We found zeros of polynomial functions, right? So you guys tell me. You want to figure out where this polynomial equals zero. How do you do it? What's that? Oh, no, that would be if you plug a zero. Yeah, we said it equal to zero, right? That's what I'm saying. And then how do you figure out where it equals zero? Well, to find a zero of a polynomial is the same as finding a factor of that polynomial. That was the factor theorem. It's the same thing, right? So this is where, didn't you guys do this on the homework quite a bit? You would plug things in and do synthetic division. 
Didn't we do that a lot? But the whole question was, what do you try? Right? So any ideas on things we might want to try? We could do Cauchy's bound, right? And so we divide by the leading coefficient. And so we know that all the zeros are going to be between like negative 17 and positive 17 because the biggest number is 16, right? And how many of you have been using a graphing calculator for these problems? Sure. Let's graph our f of x right away, okay? So let's do that. You got a calculator? Take it out. I have mine. Here I go. That's not the function. I got to get to the regular old function. And let's type in x caret 4 plus x caret 3. Bless you. Minus 4x minus 16. Okay, and I'm going to use just the standard zoom for now, although I do understand that maybe I'd have to go out to like negative 17 or positive 17, but let's just take a peek at it here. Okay, so this is what I get just from the standard zoom. Hmm, I'll zoom out a little bit, see if it looks, what's it look like it goes through by the way? Negative 2 or positive 2? Yeah, we should probably try one of those, you know. I'll zoom out to maybe get a better picture of this. But I'm thinking negative 2 or positive 2 are good things to try. Yeah, I don't get much better picture. All right, I'll zoom back in. Okay, so I'm thinking negative 2 or positive 2. Well, let me go to my paper, and I'll plug in. You guys okay if I do the positive one? Because I, I like staying positive, you know? Be an optimist. Well, it's just... You don't have so many negative signs, right? So we plug that in. Does it work? Go ahead and check that real quick if it works. Liz was very on the ball here, right? You have x to the fourth. You have x cubed. But we have an x squared term that's not there. You're right. If I don't stick in a 0, it's not going to work. Thank you. 0 for x squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. 1, 2 times 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Add it up, I get 6. Here's 12. Here's 8. Liz, you saved us. Nice job. Okay. So now I have a leftover x cubed, 3x squared, 6x, and 8. Hey, while I'm at it, what do you think I had to try? Let's try another one. What should we try with those numbers? How about we try negative 2? Because we, it sure looks like that was part of my picture. Again, I should turn that back on. But it, it sure looked like it goes through negative 2. So let's try it out. Is negative 2 a possible 0? Yeah, because it divides what? 16. you got to check that 16 out. So let's see, we try it here, and we get 1, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 8. Yes, it works. So this is nice. Okay, so let's see what we know so far. I said start by finding where f of x equals 0. Well, we know so far that f of x is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 2 times what else? x squared plus x plus 4, right? So that's what we know. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Can you test the Oh yeah, if you did it would work. Yours would Yours would factor a little different, but in the end, this is what you should get when you factor it. Is that what you got? Yeah. Okay. 
and we're trying to figure out right now where this equals zero, right? So this is easy because we know when x minus 2 is 0, that works. So x is 2. And we know that when x plus 2 is 0, that works. So x is negative 2. Now, OK, the last one. This equation here, and I'm going to do this in a different color because, well, this is worthy of our attention right now today. That's the last one I have to solve. Now, how do you solve that equation? What kind of function is that in blue there? What degree is it? Second power, right? So how do you solve that kind of equation? Well, usually we try to factor a trinomial into two binomials, but this one doesn't factor. And so if you want to solve that blue equation, do you guys know what you have to do? The quadratic formula. And I thought we could use a reminder of the quadratic formula. Am I right? OK, write it down with me. Here we go. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You want to solve that equation? That's the formula you need. And you need to know what a, b, and c are. You have to have the function equal to 0, and you have to write down, let's see, what, what do we know about a, b, and c for this problem? What's a? 1, and b is 1, and c is 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those things in. This all right? OK, so let's plug it in and see what happens. I get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 all over 2a. Uh, 2a, what's a? a is 1. Okay. So we get x is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 16 all over 2. So you can write this as x equals negative 1 half plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over 2. Well, what's going on here? They're the same denominator. Yeah. They have the same denominator, so I'm allowed to split them up. But what else is going on here, Elizabeth? Why not? It's not a real solution, right? It's not a real number. As a matter of fact, that's why when you looked at that graph, see, this was degree 4. This was degree 4. But we only see two zeros. The other two zeros are not real. And by the way, it's a great example for me to do today because I, I just want to give you the title of the section I'm supposed to cover today from chapter 3. It's section 3.4. Okay? And what's it called? It's called complex zeros. Okay, and the fundamental theorem of algebra. So here's the deal. That sounds important. Fundamental theorem of algebra. That's like the biggest theorem in algebra is what they're saying the most important fact about algebra you could possibly know. And let me sum up basically what it says to us. I don't want to go through all the details, but I want to say this much. The degree of a polynomial equals 
the number of zeros if you include multiplicity. And I'll explain what that means later. I'm putting that in parentheses for now. The number of zeros. Guys, how many zeros do we have in this problem? Well, I guess we have two real zeros, okay? But we also have two complex zeros. Here they are. Let, actually, let me show you that there's two of them. At some point here, what people usually do is they, they'll take these and split them up. One of these is x equals negative one-half plus, and you know what you do with the square root of negative 15? You write it as i times square root of 15 over 2. Raise your hand if you've worked with the imaginary numbers before. Okay, square root of negative 1 is called i. Anytime you get a negative under a square root, it's not on the number line. But we can write this solution, or x equals negative 1 half minus i square root of 15 over 2. Okay? This is what I'm going to cover in the second half of class today, is talking about how if you, if you are allowed to use complex numbers, then this is a true statement. So you have to have complex allowed. Now I have, if you look at it, now I have one, two, three, four solutions to this equation. Are you with me? Okay. Now, back to our, oh, go ahead, Phoenix. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Back when we were doing um, synthetic division, we did two negative two. Why yep. did you divide negative two into something different than what we divided two into? We didn't, you didn't divide negative two into the original polynomial. No, I didn't do it into the original. You know what I did it into? You did it into the quotient. Of yeah. Two. Why, why the reason I did that is I want to, I wanted to eventually see what's left over if I factor out x minus 2 and if I factor out x plus 2. Right? The negative 2 also goes into the original You could have done negative 2. If, for those of you that did negative 2 into the original one, you know what the next step is? Do 2 into what you get. By the way, we should see that. So does anyone have their work, I'd like to see it, where you did negative 2 into that Let's throw it up here. So when Phoenix did the problem, he took negative 2 and put it into the original, right? Well, he also is going to need 2. And so what I'm going to suggest now is take 2 and put it into what's left over. 1, negative 1, 2, negative 8. Really, you're dividing x minus 2 into this cubic polynomial. And let's work out what we get. 1. 2, 1, 2, 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 0. Notice what's left over. You're still going to get that f of x is equal to, well, we had x minus 2 and we had x plus 2, and this leftover piece is x squared plus x plus 4, so you're going to get exactly what we did. Even though you went the different order, you did negative 2, then 2. I did 2 and then negative 2. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay. But you want to keep going until you factor it all the way down. Because it said find all, this, all the real zeros. Well, okay. The funny thing about this is I'm, I'm going over stuff you guys did for homework, but I still haven't really done an inequality yet. Right? I said, look over on the right at my strategy in red one more time. Start by finding where the function equals 0. Okay, we did that. We found, really, four places where it equals 0. Okay? And I'll do the rest here. Next, use a sine diagram to solve the inequality. Okay? 
We're going to use a sine diagram to solve the inequality. I have shown you a sine diagram once before. We're going to see in a lot of these. Okay, so let's let's go ahead. And, what do I draw? Do you remember when I said we're going to do a sine diagram? The number line. Yeah, we're going to draw the number line. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw it. And then I guess the next question is, what do you put on the number line? Well, we're going to put the places where the function equals 0 on the number line. So here's my number line, right? Where does the function equal 0 at? Well, we know it equals 0 at uh, 2, and we know it equals 0 at negative 2, right? And when you do a sine diagram, what you do now is you test the function. Maybe I should write what my function is one more time. We're saying the factored form of my function is f of x equals x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x squared plus x plus 4. Okay? And what you do is you try all the different intervals. You guys with me? So what I'm going to do now, for instance, is I'm going to compute... Um, give me something bigger than two, guys. Three. Three. So I get three minus two. Now, again, I don't care what it equals. All I care is that it's positive, right? Three plus two. Positive. And when you plug three into here, what's going to happen? Positive or negative? Are you sure? Oh, that's my favorite, favorite chemistry joke. How many people have taken chemistry? You know the chemistry joke? No. Sorry. Here we are. Positive. So what's that mean? It means that f of x is greater than 0 over here, right? f of x is greater than 0 anywhere over here. You guys with me? Now what happens in here between negative 2 and... We already tested 0. We knew that was a solution. So over here, f of x is less than 0. And now the only thing left to test is something over here. What do you guys want to try? How about negative 3, right? So f of x, testing for 0, we found negative numbers between negative 2 and 2. We did. We, we put in 0. Here, I'll show you. We did it earlier, but I'll do it again. Sorry. If you plug in f of 0, what do you get? You get a negative here, right? But these are both going to be positive. Okay. So you get negative, right? Okay. Okay. That, that's what I did last time. Okay. And now I'll do f of negative 3. What changes now? Anything? Well, yeah, because the first one's negative, but also what? The second one is negative. Now, what about that third one? I'm not so sure at this point. I should check that. Let's see. If we plug in negative 3, we get, I have to be real careful here. I get negative 3 squared plus negative 3 plus 4. So what do we get for that third piece? I better work that out. Is it positive or negative? Positive. That's all I care about. Oh, yeah, 9 minus 3 plus 4. That's positive, right? So what's it mean? We have negative, negative, and then positive. So what's this f of negative 3 going to be? Positive. Positive, okay. f of negative 3 is greater than 0. So <laughs> we do all that work. We have the sine diagram, and we say, where is the function smaller than or equal to zero? And what's the answer? They say use interval notation, so I'm going to use a closed interval negative from negative two to two. And why did I use a closed interval? Because the original problem said less than or equal to, right? And we know that two and negative two make it equal to zero. So that's why you include those endpoints. And if you think about it just one more time with the graph, it makes sense, doesn't it? 
I mean, remember that it was the same as trying to figure out where this function is smaller than zero. And that happens only between two and negative two. You can see it graphically as well. Okay? You guys have questions on that? No? Yeah, who's it? So you're supposed, you're supposed to go in between the things that we know are zeros of the function, right? So here's negative 2 and here's positive 2. You could pick 1. You could pick negative 1. Any of those things you pick, if I pick 1, I'm still going to get negative, positive, positive, right? Just like I did for 0. So any of those things will be the same. There, it, this, works, this sign diagram works for polynomials because polynomials have a special property. They are continuous. And that means when you draw them, you draw them with ever, without ever picking up your pencil. So it's like once I cross 0, I can't come back up without crossing it again. So you only have to pick one test point. Does that make sense, people? So what would, what would it look like when we actually write our answer? What would you want to see? Well, what did, what did the problem say? It said to solve polynomial inequality and state your answer interval notation. Interval notation? Okay, did I give you an interval? Yeah. There so it is. 